Okay, let's practice a couple of other ones. Aluminum ion is a three positive charge. Oxygen ion, or oxide ion, is a two negative charge. So what's the formula there? Well, this has to lose three electrons, but this only wants two. If you had two Al's losing electrons, you'd have six electrons lost. You understand what I'm saying? Two, three positive charges means six electrons lost. O2 negative, I'll take two electrons. If I had another one, it would take two more, that's four. If I had another one, that would be a total of six that it would take. Three O's for every two Al's. I know. Uh, yeah, works in this case, and you get Al2O3. The name is aluminum oxide. Now, there are some ions on the periodic table, never really on the table so much as they're on a separate chart, and it's called the polyatomic ion chart. Polyatomic, many atoms. And so, this has sulfur and oxygen, all what we would call it covalently bonded. They're, they're bonded as a molecule, and then this molecule assumes a charge, and it will take two electrons. So it's an ion, it's an anion, a negative ion, and here's your cation, the Fe3 positive. Now, how are these two going to come together? Oh boy, just watch. Just like this one here, you need two of these for every three of these. I hope that makes sense. And so therefore, how are we going to be able to write that as a formula? It's really straightforward, you know. We need two of the Fe's. We don't write the charge anymore, okay? We're just saying we need two of these Fe's, and we just get rid of that charge. How many of these did we need? These SO4's. There was a two negative for this entire SO4. And so that means, then, that we, ha we need or require three of the SO4's. So we go... SO4, but we need three, so we put brackets around it to say we need three of those whole things. So you see, we need three S's, and there's three times four is 12 O's. So that's how we do chemicals that are polyatomic ion in nature. There are lots of these that we're going to practice with coming up. A little something else that will help you in terms of getting things organized with that polyatomic ion chart is that not all the polyatomic ions are there. And you have to know some of the nomenclature or how to name certain things. For instance, ClO3 negative is generally on the chart and it's called chlorate. So chlorate is one that's popularly found on a periodic table. This one, because it's one less oxygen with the chlorine but the same charge, that guy is named chlorite with an I-T-E instead of an A-T-E. So ite just means one less oxygen than eight. Now, there are some that aren't located on the chart generally. One might be CLO4 negative, which is one more than the eight. And then there's CLO negative, which is one less than the ite. If you go less than an ite, you get, well, here's a prefix for one less, hypo. That hypo just means less, like hypodermic, below the skin. It's a needle, right? Get it? Yeah? Okay, good. So hypo means one less, and so we go hypochlorite. That would be one word, hypochlorite, okay? And that's what that one is called. Now, what's this one called? Well, one more would be hyper. Hyper just means to have more, like when you're hyperactive, you're more active, hyperactive. So the thing is, this should be called hyperchlorate because it's one more than an eight, but actually it's called, we drop, drop the high and we go per. Don't ask me why, I don't know. So it's just called per for hyperchlorate. And you can do that with any ion. You can look on your chart for sulfate. There's a sulfite. There could be a hyposulfite and a persulfate, as well as nitrates and things like that. Have some fun with it. Chemistry is all about fun.